was in the town of Hat Hill, which wasn't a very big town, was one of Mr. Peabody. <laughs> in the town of Hat Hill, which wasn't a very big town, Mr. Peabody was congratulating his lovely team on a great game. They had not won, but no one seemed to care because they had such a good time playing. Mr. Peabody was a history teacher at the local school, and during the summers he dedicated every Saturday to organizing baseball games with other schools. Billy Little, who wasn't a very good boy, was one of Mr. Peabody's students. He loved baseball more than anything, and he thought Mr. Peabody was the greatest. After each game, Billy would help to pick up the balls and bats, and when they were finished, Mr. Peabody would smile and say, Good job, Billy. I'll see you next Saturday. Then he would start his walk home along the main street of Hatville, which wasn't a very big street, waving hello to everyone he knew, and everyone would wave hello back. Along the way, he passed Mrs. Funkadelli's fruit market, where Mr. Peabody stopped to admire Mrs. Funkadelli's fresh apples. pick out the shiniest apple, drop it in his bag, and continue on his way. Across the street, Tommy Tittlebottom watched with curiosity as Mr. Mr. Peabody walked away with the apple. That's strange, Tommy said to himself. <laughs> Mr. Peabody didn't pay anyone for that apple. Tommy got on the skateboard and rushed to tell his friends. The following Saturday, Mr. Peabody's team played another game, and they lost, as usual, but no one seemed to care because they had such a good time playing.
up the balls and bats, and Mr. Peabody set off on his walk home. He, he waved to everyone he knew, and they waved back. Once again, he stopped outside Mrs. Funkadelli's fruit market, picked up the shiniest apple, dropped it in his bag, and continued on his way. Turtlebottom and his friends watched Mr. Peabody. Mr. Across the street, Tommy Turtlebottom watched Mr. Peabody, and they were amazed at what they saw. Mr. Peabody had not paid for his apple. They couldn't wait to tell all of their friends. He told their parents, he told their neighbors, he told their friends in the town of Hatville, which wasn't a very big town. Saturday after that, Mr. Peabody was standing all alone on the baseball field, wondering where everybody was. Then he saw Billy walking towards him with a sad look on his face. Hello, Billy. I'm glad you're here, but where's the rest of the team? Asked Mr. Peabody, but Billy remained silent. What is it, Billy? He asked again. Billy didn't look up. Everybody thinks you're a thief. He said to the ground. Mr. Peabody looked confused. He took off his hat and scratched his head. Who says I'm a thief, Billy? And what did I steal? He said. Tommy Turtlebottom and his friends said they saw you take an apple from Mrs. Funkadelli's fruit market. Twice, and you didn't even pay for them. Answered Billy. Oh, said Mr. Peabody, putting his hat back on his head. Let's go talk to Mrs. Funkadelli about it, shall we? Billy and Mr. Peabody walked down the main street, which wasn't a very big street, and Mr. Peabody waved to all the people he knew. But now, some of them did not wave back, and some pretended they did not even see him. They finally arrived at Mrs. Funkadelli's fruit market. Out popped Mrs. Funkadelli, who said, Hey, Mr. Peabody, why aren't you at the game? There wasn't a game today, said Mr. Peabody. And I was wondering if I can take my apple earlier than usual. Sure, why not? You take them every Saturday morning when you pick up your milk. You want the big shiny one, Mr. Peabody?
Mr. Peabody took his apple, smiled, and offered it to Billy. I would like to take the apple, Mr. Peabody. I have to go and find Tommy and explain everything, said Billy. When you find him, ask him to come over to my house. I would like to speak to him, too, replied Mr. Peabody. A little while later, Billy found Tommy and told him what had happened with the apples. He told Tommy that Mr. Peabody wanted to speak to him right away. So off Tommy ran, and when he arrived, he rang the doorbell, and Mr. Peabody came to the door. They looked at each other for a while. Oh dear, Mr. Peabody, I didn't understand, but it looked like you had stolen those apples. Mr. Peabody's eyebrows went up a little, and he felt a warm breeze blow across his face. It doesn't matter what it looked like. What matters is the truth. Tommy looked down at his shoes and said, I'm sorry. Is there, any that, is there anything I can do to make things better now? Mr. Peabody took a deep breath, looked up at a small cloud in the sky, and said, I'll tell you what, Tommy. Meet me at the baseball diamond in one hour and bring a, pil and bring a pillow stuffed with feathers. Okay, said Tommy, who then ran off to his house to get a pillow. An hour later, Tommy met Mr. Peabody on the pitcher's mound. Hello, Tommy. Follow me and bring your pillow. Tommy followed Mr. Peabody to the top of the bleachers, wondering what this was all about. It's a windy day, isn't it? Asked Mr. Peabody when they reached the top. Not Tommy nodded his head in agreement. Here's a pair of scissors. Now you must go pick up all the stuff. Now you must go cut the pillow in half. Tommy looked confused, but did it anyway. He thought it was a small price to, to pay to gain Mr. Peabody's forgiveness. The wind carried the thousands of feathers far and wide. Tommy looked relieved and said, Is this all I have to do to make things better now? 
There is one more thing, said Mr. Peabody. Now you must go pick up all those feathers. Tommy frowned. I don't think that's possible to pick up all those feathers, Tommy replied. It is just as impossible to undo the damage that you have done by spreading the rumor I am a thief, said Mr. Peabody. Each feather represents a person in a hat felt. There was a long pause as Tommy began to understand what Mr. Peabody was saying. Finally, he said, I guess I have a lot of work ahead of me. Mr. Peabody smiled and said, Indeed you do. Next time, don't be so quick to judge a person and remember the powers of your words. Then he handed Tommy the shiny red apple and made his way home.